Are we recording in progress? Okay. A little gargly. That sounds like me in the morning. But... <laughs> so I want to call the meeting to order. We're in executive oh, meeting. Order. meeting for May 4th, Thursday, May 4th. Or it's Thursday, May 4th. You, uh, roll call, please. Uh, roll call, please. Certainly, sir. Just a moment. Certainly, sir. Just a moment. We're just making some technical adjustments. Making some technical adjustments. <laughs> Still. Sound check. Sound check. Okay, sir. And beginning with roll call. Uh, with Director roll Kirk. Call. Present. Director McMillan. Here. Director Hilliard. Here. Director Goins. Here. President Rodoni. Present. Would anyone like to make any adjustments to the agenda today? To the agenda today. All right. Seeing none, we're going to go to item four, which is open time. This is the where the public is welcome to address the executive committee at this time on matters not on the agenda uh, not are the within agenda. the jurisdiction of the committee. Jurisdiction um, of the committee. Please be advised that pursuant to the government code, the committee is not permitted to discuss or take action on any matter not on the agenda. Uh, Comments may be no longer than three minutes and should be respectful to the community. Please remember to silence your phone during the meeting and mute your microphones when not reporting out. Martina, any one for open time today? One for open time. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak on the current agenda item, the open time for public expression? Please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine to raise your hand and unmute yourself with star six if you're joining us by phone. Where there are no hands for public comment. Thank you. We'll move to item five, which is the ex executive officer report. It's an oral report by executive officer Brown. Good morning, President Rodoni, uh, committee members. Happy to be back in the this Feels like forever ago that I was gone. Um, it's funny how that happens, but um, we hit, the, um, uh, before I get into the Asian American and Pacific Islander month, I will want to, I do want to say something that's, that I could disappear, so to speak, for two weeks and have the organization continue to run seamlessly um, do our awesome stuff, the work of our member agencies. It just shows the, what a um, and talented group that we have. And I think Ann proved that really board meetings anymore. So um, just kidding. That, but it, um, I was watching from, from the original Inverness rather than the California Inverness and was impressed with was all impressed went, went excellent. So uh, to, May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. We just wanted to point that out. And we'll get into the rest of my report. Strategic metrics for goals one, three, and five. We um, thank you for to Charlotte Jourdain for hosting two very um, successful meetings, one with the ad hoc subcommittee of the board to dig into goals one, three, and five. That's vegetation management grants and defensible space evaluations those, those are the goals related to one three and five uh charlotte um, facilitated an awesome meeting to, to identify what metrics we should be measuring for each of those goals the subcommittee was able to weigh in give their thoughts and and, and opinions on that charlotte was able to uh, massage that turn that into a, a document and a package that we brought to our subject matter experts within the mwpa and that's our com um, committee members from the operations committee and our advisory technical committee because um without their input to these metrics we may not we may be creating metrics that are unreasonable to create or just not accurate um so we met with them last week. The meeting went very well. The feedback was um, 
almost 100% positive. We had a couple little tweaks to a couple of the metrics. So we look forward to Charlotte um, tying this package up nicely and presenting to the, um, the full board in the June meeting. The California Wildfire and Forest Resilience Task Force, it's a quarterly meeting that occurs throughout the state. This next one is in Santa Cruz. Um, we have been asked, specifically Ann was asked to be on a panel discussion on May 11th, talking about um, creating fire adapted communities. Uh, she's had a couple um, prep meetings, but so she'll be presenting at that. But they also asked us to host a site visit. Each one of their quarterly meetings, they have site visits. And even though the meeting's down in Santa Cruz, they consider us close enough to that to for site visits. So we are hosting a site visit to take people to uh, the project areas of the Greater Ross Valley Shaded Fuel Break. And there's especially interested in, in it because of the importance of this project, but also the how we went through the Cal VTP to get to approval of that project. And as of this morning, we had 14 people um, signed up for that tour. And we have the support of Marin County Fire with um, transportation as well as Novato Fire providing vans. And um, we're going to all rally here, put the people in vans, and then take them for that tour. And um, based on some of the other tours that are going on, 14 is actually pretty high. So we feel lucky to have that great, that large of a number of attendees, considering we're so far from Santa Cruz, where a lot of the people are staying in a hotel in Santa Cruz. So we're really happy about that. What's great about this task force, though, is that all the, the vast majority of the agencies that we need to make strategic um, relationships with are all at this meeting, Department of Conservation, Coastal Conservancy, Cal Fire, uh, U.S. Forest Service, you name it. They're there, and it, it gives a, us a great opportunity to talk to the people who have the grant funds that we are applying for and develop those relationships. Uh, the Fire Foundry, um, us, and one TAM are actually hosting a table. The, the, the morning session is a bunch of – it's where um, agencies have table, or have an opportunity to table. And so um, we have two tables between the three agencies to talk about how the MWPA is working with the one TAM, working with the fire foundry to get that work done. And this is also going to be a key opportunity for the fire foundry to start working on. Um, 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 oh, my God, the development of, of work, workforce development uh, funding opportunities. Thank you. Finally came to me. I need more coffee. Um, so that's going to be a great opportunity for them. Um, coming up this um, Saturday, May 6th, uh, I will be going out to um, Inverness Ridge and uh, meeting with the In Inverness Ridge Association and giving what I call wildfire behavior awareness for the resident. And this is something that I actually started working on shortly after the 2017 fires when I was the deputy fire chief. We have such a well-informed and, and, and intelligent community in Marin. I find it works better if we give the residents information how to digest or give them training on how to digest the information that's given to them rather than simply tell them what they should be doing. It works so much better if we give them the why. And um, I went, I had the opportunity to go out with some residents um, several years ago in San Anselmo, on a, standing on a fire road in a, in a small little canyon. And I went through the two fire triangles. One fire triangle is simply how fires burn. And then the other fire triangle is a wildfire triangle. And it is how wildfires burn in relation to the fuel, the terrain, and the weather. I spent about five minutes on the first fire triangle and about five minutes on each of the legs of the other fire triangle. And you can just see the lights come on. So we're gonna be doing this um, on the Inverness Ridge Trail in um, Point or Inverness, it's a fire road that goes from Limitor Road that connects to Drake's View Drive. And it's right in the footprint of the Vision Fire. And there's a nice little turn where we can see the terrain, we can see the fuel, and we can talk wildfire behavior. And it helps the residents be, become more informed, makes better decisions for their home hardening, better decisions for defensible space, and then should a fire occur, better decisions during evacuations. And um, FireSafe Marin will be there with their videographer. This is something I've been wanting to turn into um, public service announcements. So they're going to video the whole thing, and then we can turn them into about four or five PSAs, focusing, making them small segments that are digestible. And so looking forward to that. 
Um, another networking opportunity is CFED stands for the California Fire, EMS, and Disaster Conference. Uh, Ann and I were asked to deliver an um, a, a hour-long chat about how the MWPA was created, what we're doing, and how we're succeeding. And so Sunday, May 21st is when we'll be down there speaking, and then we're going to fly back up home on the 22nd. But again, it's another networking opportunity for us to create these strategic relationships. Um, and speaking of strategic relationships and because of our reputation, Cal Poly San Luis, um, they have a group that's received a grant to help provide training and they tailored a training to the needs of the organization. They reached out to us and said, it sounds like you guys, everyone we talk to says that we need to talk to you and see what um, needs are, what you guys have. And so um, one of the needs we pointed out was um, the challenges of environmental compliance in the coastal zone. And so they're going to wrap up a training, bring some of the Coastal Commission staff, some of the county staff, and bring some of our wildfire practitioners, bring them out together in the field and provide a training. It's more, let's get everybody together and talk through how we're going to do this. So um, Cal Poly reached out to us. We gave them that suggestion, and now they're starting to build that. And we're looking at, was it October, November, that we would be um, looking to deliver that training. Smart and connected communities. This is, um, if you guys remember um, several years, uh, I'm sure Supervisor Rodone here remembers this, uh, UC Berkeley worked with Bolinas to create an evacuation scenario type game. This is the um, genesis of that original project with a little hiatus due to COVID. And they've taken four of the target areas in Marin and are creating evacuation scenario simulations and um, all other ways to help inform residents about how and what we need to do to make our communities fire adapted. We're hosting that meeting here in the board chambers on May 10th. And we have a lot of our um, land management agencies attended attending and many of our firewise leaders will be attending, but we also have invited all of our community-based organizations that have been supporting our efforts. So it should be a pretty good meeting here. And then um, second to last item is um, I have, you know, I think we all saw the article from Dick Spotswood that was talking about the MWPA's need to increase our public outreach. And absolutely we we will we we need to continue to improve our public outreach. However, I don't think it was a fair assessment from Mr. Spotswood in the um, in his article. So I've prepared a page and a half memo that outlines all of our current public outreach and what our future um, improvements to our public outreach program is. I'll share it. I was, wanted to chat with you guys about it first um, and then pass that along to the full board um, this afternoon. Um, and then we, I want to invite um, Dick to lunch or breakfast or something and, and show him what we're doing and go and ask him for, from his professional and um, um, opinion where we can improve. And, and that, that can um, add, be added to the bottom of my memo um, where we can improve. One more. I have one more item there. Just a reminder that we have Ember Stomp on May 20th um, and the signups for the board members. Martina, was it eight board members that we've signed up? So we've off, we've asked the board members to come and, and take turns to be at our table. So eight board members have stepped up for that. And then I really do have one, one tiny little thing and that's because I grew up in the seventies as a kid. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> eight questions of Questions with the executive committee of Mark and Catherine. Did you have one? Well, I think I'm going to save it for our discussion okay. because it's included in the chart that was in the back of about. Okay. But I just wanted to say, apparently, apparently, Mr. Spotswood doesn't read his own paper. We've been on the front page, and I don't know how many times, and we've also had full page ads in his paper, and so I think you know he. Uh, misread the or doesn't read his paper. Sorry, but we're doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah, Julie, go ahead. Um, it sounds like based on all those meetings you all have been invited to that the profile of MWPA is accelerating dramatically just in the last month or so. So that's fantastic. 
Thank you. Congratulations. And we are being careful with our time and we're, we're making sure that we don't overcommit to these. We've actually turned a couple requests down. So we're making sure that we have a good balance of expanding our network, but still being able to have time to actually do our work. So I'm just wondering where you're going to take the people from Santa Cruz to the greater Ross Valley shaded field break. Do you have a specific area in mind? We, we do. Part of it is going to be on Alima Road which is where we haven't done work yet so that they can see the, the, the fuel, uh, what it looks like before the work. And also um, the challenges that we have because Alima road in Fairfax is where when we have heavy rains, we almost always have a slide there. And so that shows the difficulty in the, um, the, the terrain that we're working in. And then we will go into Baywood Canyon and show some of the work that we've done in Baywood Canyon. It's phenomenal. And what we like about the Baywood Canyon piece is that there's also a creek that goes through there and it shows that how we're working within waterways in a re, uh, responsible way. And then um, back towards Oak Manor School and then back towards San Domenico School. Okay, that's great. And then the um, Inverness Ridge Wildfire Behavior Awareness for Residents. I'm wondering how you communicated that to the residents, how you got the word out, and if there's other opportunities for similar um, awareness meetings in other neighborhoods. So I'll start with the second question first and say, absolutely. Um, I look forward to doing, I love doing it, and I think it's a, it's a valuable um conversation to have. In fact, uh, Rachel, I was going to reach out to your um, disaster preparedness group for the Twin Cities as, as the next visit. And um, the way we publicized it is the Inverness Ridge Association is actually pretty tight knit and they have a great communications network. And so they've communicated it through that. And also um, um, we had a 10 minute spot yesterday on KWMR to talk about that and um, through some of the social media, like at um, the um, the barn or the um, Dennis helped me with the where the feed store is in Point Reyes. Toby's. Toby's. Toby's helped um, um, put that out for us. Thank you. Great. Rachel? Yeah, just a quick question on the tour for next week. Um, has the press been invited? No. Do you want the press invited? <laughs> They've been invited. They've been on a similar tour already, but I can reach out to. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we actually are. Um, Ann and I are meeting with Nevada Fire and the IJ at lunchtime today to talk about the Greater Nevada Shaded Fuel Break with Will Houston. So I can talk to Will see if he's interested in going. Because I think it's a unique opportunity not only to show what we, the work we've been doing, but the the work that the the rest of the state is observing of what we're doing. Yeah. At and yeah, when, when we chat with Will today, I'll bring that up. Yeah, I think that's really important. I think and it sort of maybe it ties into um, Mr. Spotwood's concerns that maybe it's just not recognizing that MWPA has really driven a lot of this work um, from that perspective and not sure if, and, and understanding where it's coming from. And, and actually, in the, the memo about the outreach, um, I include both the Greater Novato and the Greater Ross Valley Shaded Fuel Breaks as outreach because each one of the residents that we are doing work on their property get a knock on the door and a, a notice we get a right of entry from signed from them. And so they know that that's public outreach. Every one of those residents that had work done on their property know exactly who's doing that work. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great. Thank you. Okay. Bruce, anything Bruce. quick? Um, Mark, thanks for a great report, and I'm real excited about going to the, the California Wildfire Forest Resilience Task Force. I participated in, in that last year, uh, tabled, um, and did represent some of our interests. Um, it, my question is, will you be presenting beyond the tabling uh, event? Will you actually be part of the task force meeting? Yes, yeah, Anne will be on a panel discussion during the task force meeting itself. Okay. A wonderful opportunity to tell our story and the, the tabling and the networking is just, as you said, it's just, it's a great opportunity to talk to all those agencies and, and talk about our denominator, which we're going to talk about a little bit later here today and the requests coming in. But I want to make a comment about Anne's performance while you were gone. Um, last week, uh, Julie and I had the pleasure of attending the, the Marin City field tour and uh, there were 45 people I counted, uh, local residents, local advocates, the local housing authority, um, some environmental interests, but uh, I, I, between Anne, your, your 
calm, clear presentation on on the work that was done. You know, Jason's articulation of you know some of the be, between the two of you hit all the practical issues. You hit the science. You hit the real real effect that that we were having, and it, it was really lovely, stunning, very effective. And I want to say that um, it, it was a it was just a very meaningful and effective engagement for for the public. Um, so uh, anyway, and I just publicly want to thank you for your it, it, just your professional composure and performance. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Bruce. Anything else from the executive committee? All right. We're going to go to the public now on the executive officer's report. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the executive officer's report, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining us by phone. And sir, it does look like we have a comment from Stephen Keese. Stephen, you should be able to deliver your comment at this time. Hi. Um, I just wanted to second what Catherine said. Spotswood is a, a getting to be a crotchety old man, almost like I am. Uh, he's a he he uh, likes to stir up stuff, and he doesn't worry so much about whether he's accurate. Uh, but uh, he. You all are doing a great job on, on the PR, so keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. If there are any if there are any additional members of the public wishing to speak on the executive officer's report item of the agenda, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining us by phone. And sir, we do not have any additional comments. Thank you. I'll bring it back to the committee for further discussion. No action required. All right. Item six is a consent calendar opportunity for the public to comment on the consent calendar it will occur prior to the committee's discussion of the consent calendar. Uh, we may approve it entirely in at one action or an alternative separate items out. We only have one item today, so we'll take public comment on that. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the consent calendar item, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining us by phone. And sir, there are no hands for comment. Great. Any comments from the committee on the uh, consent calendar? If not, can I have a motion, please? Make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Thank you. Second. Okay. Then moved by Curse, uh, second by Julie. Um, roll call, please. We, we can do a voice vote, aye. I guess. So we're all here. Aye. So mm -hmm. all in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose. Abstain. That motion passes. Thank you. Item seven is committee reports. We have a report from the Citizens Oversight Committee. And they reached out to me yesterday. and said they have uh, nothing to report and no questions to ask for today's agenda. All right. Thank you, Mark. We'll move on to item eight and discussion items. And item 8B, 8A, rather, is the work plan and budget development process. Mark? I'll, I'll, I'll kick that off. And if I miss anything, Anne can fill in the gaps. And if you guys have any questions, I can't answer. I've got Ann and, 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 and Megan to support this. Um, every year, should we should be better at building our work plan and annual budget. And um, this year, that is true again. And that first year, when we built that first work plan, the process was laborious, and the ATC members especially had to put a tremendous amount of effort then we came in, created our work plan portal that has helped streamline development of that. That was last year was the first um, dip into the work plan portal. This year, it went even better. But I have to say that the advisory technical committee especially put the same amount of effort into building this work plan, but they were able to put less effort into the process and more effort into developing and vetting and challenging each other to make their projects better. I really think the advisory technical committee this year found its place and they worked hard to create awesome projects. And some of them, there were questions about some of them and they respectfully challenged each other, both in public meetings and in at ad hoc subcommittee meetings to make those positions, to make those projects even better and to make sure that they were in alignment with measure C. A couple of examples would be the the law enforcement personnel with San Rafael. How can and and um, Novato is asking for similar positions. 
very much in the line, if done properly, these positions are very much in line with Measure C. If not done properly, they can get into a realm that is not Measure C's responsibility. So they really challenge each other on how to make those um, those types of positions that are hybrid positions in alignment with Measure C. So um, those conversations have occurred. We're going to continue to expand that conversation, especially with the law enforcement type positions of, you know, start showing us the number of ignitions before this event or before these efforts started. What are the ignitions after these events? How many contacts are your personnel having with, with people that could be creating? So give us some of the data to help support that. And then perhaps we need to um, explore if, if it's not showing that it is one 100% wildfire prevention that their efforts are involved, then we need to look at it a cost share. So those conversations were occurring. We had a, um, another challenging conversation regarding um, Chipper Day and how people were going to be involved with Chipper Day. A lot of work behind the scenes. And to be honest with you, I think where we landed was a way to improve Chipper Day. So um, again, the ATC really worked hard and an operations committee was right behind them to support them. Priority funding was the first time that we did priority funding this year. And what we did is that we set a 80% um, bar for the core budget for each of the five zones. Here's 80% of the revenue that was generated within your area. So you budget to that. And then if you have a new and emerging or an important project, then you can dip into that 20% priority funding pool, which was at $1.3 million. Um, it's a, very big step away from where we had been the last several years where everyone was targeting for 100%. Um, they took a small step towards embracing this. Um, one project was approved as a priority project, and that was the um, doing the West Marin um, environmental compliance and project scoping for a project similar to the Greater Ross Valley and the Greater Nevada Shaded Fuel Breaks. So that project is being funded, but it's not funded to the $1.3 million so what they're doing is redistributing the remainder with that 1.3 million back to the zones. And I think as time progresses and we get um, a, um, you know, a stronger, higher value type project that we know is going to expend up to that 1.3 million, then you're going to start seeing that priority funding get more isolated into individual products, projects, excuse me. One of the things that you'll see on the agenda that I've um, when it'll be in addition to what we have as a draft agenda is the fire safe Marin contract will be part of the consent items for um, our agenda. We had a three year contract with fire safe Marin and it expires June 30th. So we have rewritten that contract um, and then using the work plan as the, uh, the approved work plan as the addendum. That way, that's how we can have that as a consent item before the board actually approves the work plan because it's the approved work plan that ends up being the addendum to the contract with FireSafe Marin. Um, you probably noticed that we have um, on the agenda the, um, a request to um, create and fill two vegetation management specialist positions that was included in the work plan and budget. The vast majority of the um, payroll for these positions will be from project that they are assigned to work on. And we have set up a project-based timekeeping system within our payroll. So when a, if the one of the VMSs is working on the Greater Ross Valley Shaded Fuel Break for eight hours on Monday the 1st, their pay sheet shows the project code for the Greater Ross Valley Shaded Fuel Break and their, their pay gets pulled straight from that. Not all of their time will be um, directly attributable to a project. So we also have a funding pool for the planning aspect. So the VMSs have a tremendous role in creating our projects. Well, there's not a project yet to build to. So we had to create a, a little bit of a funding pool within the JPA wide budget to pay for them when they're not directly assigned to a project. And um, I just want to commend um, how aligned the work plan is to our house out approach the ATC put together and work um, approved by the operations committee yesterday. Um, it includes additional support, West Marine compliance and shaded fuel breaks, uh, continue work on our evacuation routes and our shaded fuel breaks, and then continuing to refine our defensible space evaluation program. It's getting better every year to exactly how, what we should be doing. And um, 
we are spending down our first CAL FIRE grant quickly, which CAL FIRE loves to see. They love to see you to spend their grants, which makes you um, more attractive for future grants. And so we have applied for a grant for the Greater Nevada Shaded Fuel Break. And while we haven't gotten an approval, the questions they're asking sounds like they're headed towards approval. And with that, I'll ask my partners here if I missed anything and open up the questions. And anything to add? No, I um, I guess the last thing I would add is just um, a lot of uh, gratitude towards the ATC and operations committee members for all their time and dedication, thinking through difficult uh, questions. Um, the ad hoc subcommittees met several times to discuss all of the proposals and the budget numbers, and uh, they were just fantastic to work with and spent a lot of time and energy to make sure that we were moving in a positive direction. Doing a little mental math in my head, I think we've had between um, full meetings and ad hoc subcommittee meetings, probably 15 to develop the work plan. All right, good, good update. Thank you both. Coming back to the executive committee for questions. Bruce, you want to start this time? Great report, Mark. Um, in regards to the vegetation management positions, um, you know, the context of this goes back about a year and a half to the, the original strategic ad hoc planning committee, the team, uh, where we we struggled with with the with this organization, with our roles and responsibilities. And we actually asked the question of, uh, you know, are we a planning? Or, or are we to, to become an implementation organization? What is it that we need? And and you know these ideas came from from you and Anne uh, well over a year ago. And I know it's taken some time to get to where we are, but I, I just do. I think in your in your um, articulation of what this is, a little bit more of the of when and why it is, and that that this in, indeed is the full build out. I believe. Of organizations we currently understand it and that it, it, its origins are not not the strategic ad hoc but they came from the atc and from from ops and and you know this is a, a collaborative and you you did the one one iteration which is to hire one staff and go slow but it, it appears as though you're ready but I, I just for me having been a part of that and those that haven't um if if just a question would be you know would, would it in your mind be valuable just to give a little bit more contextual uh, background on this before you present it to the full board and the public because we're hiring more more positions but indeed this was integral to us being successful will do thank you yeah just suggestion thank, thank you. you great report thank you bruce uh, rachel anything Catherine. Just congratulations this is a huge amount of work i really i really am um appreciative of all of your time and also the two committees and how they help each other out and we're getting better all the time. So yeah. thank we're, you. We're, we're at, we've accomplished step two out of four. Step three is the finance committee on Monday. And um, we're really close at wrapping up the budget to be, um, and actually amazingly close um, when Ann's uh, spreadsheet got transferred over into our finance department's spreadsheet. It was almost done. We have just a couple little I's to dot T's to cross and we'll be able to post the budget. And then the, the final step is May 18th. Terrific. Thanks. Go ahead, Julie. Um, and I would just encourage you when you make the full presentation to the board to indicate that it has taken approximately 15 meetings with however many people, just so that the public is confident that these projects have been vetted and carefully planned and they're prudent. And, and as you point out, things are getting easier and faster in terms of the planning. That's all really good. 15 meetings, meetings doesn't sound like easier, but, <laughs> but it, it was. The process was easier and allowed them to put their time into the quality of the content. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. Terrific. We'll take One public more. comment. Oh, go ahead, Kathleen. One more. And that is, they're working together, not at odds. They're not competing. They're buying in, and they're giving you their best. Yep. That's. I just wanted to add that. Thank you, Catherine. So now we'll go to public comment on this item. If there, if there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the current agenda item, the work plan and budget develop, development process, please raise your hand in the reactions, or press star nine if you're joining us by phone. And sir, we do not have any hands for comment. 
Okay, bring it back to the executive committee for further discussion. No action is required. Seeing everyone shaking their head no, we'll move to item 8B. Discussion and possible priority setting of organizational development suggestions. Mark, do you want to kick it off? Or you want to just kick it to Gene? Okay. Gene Bonetter, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this uh, this effort came out of the evaluation of the executive officer for last year's period of time. Um, board members were um, active in making additional suggestions in addition to delivering um, uh, Mark Brown's evaluation. And so this report is following up on those organizational development suggestions. And as um, the executive committee asked Bruce and Rachel to form a subcommittee to take a look at these and put some context to it. And so they have done so in the attachment to the staff report. Um, and the questions before you today are, um, what do you wanna do with this document? Um, they're suggestions. So it's not a to-do list, um, the executive committee made that perfectly clear and I've passed that along to Mark. It's not to be regarded as do these items. Um, the question is which items should be done by whom and, um, and what are the intended outcomes? So the questions before you today are, um, do, does this need additional work? Are there things that should be um, set aside or things that should be added? Is there more information needed? Um, I'd, I'd like to encourage Mark to comment on what he thinks is important off of this list uh, to share with you um, and, and what the potential effect is on workload. Um, that's a critical issue. If, this, if some of these suggestions are going to supplant existing workload, then you need to talk about that and how does that, how does that work? How does that happen? Um, and then um, the subcommittee identified uh, categories, and there are five high, high categories on this, which is high impact um, and, and high um, expense or cost. And so um, we, we didn't sort those out. Um, we just gave you a list here. So, um, so you, you might want to take a look at those um, at, at first. And so... The alternatives are further discussion here at the executive committee. Um, another option is to turn it over to Mark and um, see what he thinks and uh, let him sort that out, uh, perhaps with some help from Bruce and Rachel. Um, and then I'd because they're board suggestions that came out of the executive officer's evaluation, I do think at some point in time there should be a consent calendar item that just updates the board to indicate that your suggestions were heard and the executive committee has been working on it. And if you have reached an outcome, fine. Otherwise, it's a progress report. The key issues that I spotted from this list were uh, four. Um, one is there's an emphasis on Measure C renewal. Um, and even though it's early, seems early, um, uh, board members seem to think it's not early. Um, that the question about uh, whether or not um, ATC and ops need to be Brown Act meetings was a question, and that's a legal analysis that needs to be done. Um, there, they are occupied by staff, and so, and that's um, not always a Brown Act meeting. So. Um, there was some interest in, in setting up a board retreat to talk about perhaps some of these items here and other things about strategy and long-term plans. And the communications and public outreach part continues to be important. So my suggestion to you is um, ask Mark what he thinks. This was provided to him. Um, I I, unfortunately, I think it may have been provided uh, during his vacation, and so I'm hoping he didn't spend any time on it at all at that, but um, hopefully he had a little bit of time afterwards to take a look 
and give us his thoughts um, for your consideration and to help you form a strategy going forward. Thank you, Jean. So before going to Mark, though, I think I'm going to go to the ad hoc committee to get their, their response and input, and then we'll take it to Mark. So. Sure, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, Jean, thank you for your help in working with us. Um, I think it's really important at this stage with these items is to consider it a working document. We did really did not change the wording a lot from the item. Um, because we wanted to make sure that when people read this, other board members read this, they saw that their words were actually reflected here. So we didn't want to do a lot of consolidation or rephrasing. Um, it is a working document. The effort and costs were just back of napkin thoughts. There's no analysis done at this point. Um, so and they may be really wrong. Um, so that's where we need to have some uh, staff expertise to look at this. And then also many of the items can probably be broken into multiple items into smaller sets. So again, this becomes a working document for us. Um, we really wanted to follow up as, as Jean had mentioned to make sure that as we went through the work of gathering input from the board members, the, this was really reflected in moving forward in some fashion. Um, and so that's where we were with this document. It is not to change the direction of anything that we're working on today. Um, and as I just want to reiterate, as Jean had said, that if we take on any of this other work, we will need to actually look at the full picture and potentially take out something that we're currently working on today. Um, we can't just add on more without really looking at the full picture. So um, all, I think there are good ideas in here, but again, I'm also very aware that you can't just throw new ideas on without taking something else out <laughs> unless you bring other people on. So with that, I think, and then today I, I don't, it's really not the time to go through one by one in terms of talking about the specifics of these requests. It's really to look at it comprehensively in terms of as we move forward within an organization, what are things that we might want to take into consideration going forward? Great, thank you, Rachel. Bruce? Great, Jean, um, thank you for your report and in summary and breaking breaking out you know, what, what you see as kind of four thematic areas. I'm, I'm in, in agreement with that. I wanna thank Rachel who, who behind the scenes did most of the typing in the organization um with without which um this this would have looked quite different so i want to thank rachel um i uh rachel i agree with your comments that this this indeed is a working document that came from our all of our directors all of us here and others not and um we you know just we we must follow through we must you know we must confirm that we listened and heard and uh that we've we've taken this all into consideration um, I have made a couple of, um, and Mark and Ann, um, Jean, how we go forth with this, frankly, um, really is a, a continued conversation. I have looked at this again uh, after kind of going through the work and other things that have been, I've been real busy with, but came to a couple of realizations. Of, one is that some of these items are just, they're just critical components and integral to an effective organization without which we're not going to be successful. So I, I can... Uh, and I, I can enumerate those, but I won't do those today, and th that we can have a conversation in that regard, but there are three or four that, without which, you know, turn off the lights, party's over. So, um, and, and no effort, ongoing effort, uh, ongoing work that you and Ann do, strategic work, looking at our meetings, making sure we're efficient, um, working on strategic partners, these are, these are no-brainers, and you're doing them, and so there's, there's a handful of those that are, you know, no-brainers. No um, there are a few that, that could, what particularly concern me are the long-term um, build out of MWPA. Who are we? What is it that we want to achieve? And uh, there are, again, there are three or four items that are all related. Uh, so you can't adopt one without adopting the other. And um, I don't know that we necessarily need to go back to the drawing board and, and to enumerate those, but, you know, I could sit here and link, you know, page, you know, pages and lines. I've already done that. And little staff work behind, but to sit down and say that these are this is there's a cluster of four which are about Measure C, and our effectiveness and and our renewal. So um, I'm uh, 
want to hear your your comments and the path forward. Let's 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 make it it let's make it easy and not. I don't think we need to spend days on this. Um, I like the idea of of a conversation. Um, the the one item that Gene did not mention, which is in the memo here, is this topic about um, is this concept of us doing an exercise which is full build out of MWPA. What what do we hope to achieve? You know, there's short term which we're dealing with right now. Intermediate stuff we're working on some of that. And what's what's the, what's that big? We have a vision in 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 our strategic document which which we all agreed to and it is that vision what we haven't done is to have done the homework on what's the actual footprint associated with that vision miles of roads have been affected miles of shaded fuel breaks have been affected conditions of um, of the vegetation management projects uh, transform it parcels those kinds of things i have uh I, I believe that we cannot go much further without articulating and let me go back that um, when we started MWPA, and I'm sorry that, that I just have to say these words. Um, <laughs> when we started several years ago, we were challenged for to 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 we were asked that shouldn't we do a cumulative impact analysis of of the work that we're going to do by by our by our partners, and the answer talking to the agencies was that the members didn't know what their build out would be. Novato didn't know, Inverness didn't know. You know, Southern Marin didn't know, but we've matured, and through your work planning, we set kind of a, a set of of practices which are which are purposeful and scientifically based and effective. I think we all better know if we waved the magic wand and looked ahead 30, 40, 50 years, what would that landscape look like? And I think we can do that now, and and then we can go to Cal Fire and Department of Conservation and and others and say, yeah, we need five million. Yeah, we, we we need another five. We need another twenty-five, um, and because we're we're halfway through, our full build out is this, and we're here, and and our budget, by the way, only gets us this far. So anyway, I'm I'm suggesting that that we add into our planning process um, a, a, a full build out exercise, and it, it, I'll characterize it as what is the denominator uh, for for our expression of the fraction of the work that we've accomplished. So I'm suggesting that Mark, I haven't talked with you in great detail, but anyway, I, I ongoing document in summary um, conversation, how you wanna go forth. The, the only thing that I saw was missing was the full build out. And that may be integral to some of the other strategic ad hoc work going, I don't know, but um, I, I think that this is just keeping us right on top and gonna make us um, as effective as we can be. So. I'm real interested in your feedback, Mark, and 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 what what the paths forward are. Uh, summary: Let's 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 make it easy. Let's let's not uh, let's not make it complicated. So, Mark, we'll go to you now, <clears throat> and then open it up for questions. Yeah, and and I look really look forward to sitting down and 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 um, discussing this with the ad hoc subcommittee of the exec committee um, with Gene, I'm sure would be that that conversation and Anne would need to be by my side. The components in here are 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 um, on target. And and to be honest with you, I think two thirds of these items are already ongoing. Um, a lot of it's behind the scenes. Some of it's up, up front, but just we are just like I'll talk about the denominator that Bruce mentioned, which is absolutely vital for us to come up with. We are so close to being able to come up with that denominator now. That's part of the goals one, three, and five strategic metrics. And then on, as you saw for the agenda, the consent item is bringing on board our GIS consultant. And the only way we are going to be able to come up with that denominator is combining the metrics with our GIS analysis. And so we've got two of those last pieces coming together to create that denominator. And then um, many of the other items um, I want to, uh, I'll be able to express where, where we are with the behind the scenes stuff, but also up front. And then um, there's a couple intriguing ideas in here that I want to tug on and pull some strings with you guys and see and, and dig a little bit deeper with them. I'm looking forward to it. I, um, I have a observation. Um, and I, I think, as you indicate, Mark, most of this 
stuff is already stuff that's going on. And so it, it strikes me that during the um, evaluation, a lot of people had great ideas, but they were not aware of what's been going on. So I think a big component perhaps in your discussion is how to educate the board on all these great ideas or actually most of them are being implemented. Um, it struck me that one comment was we need to figure out how to get the board members more engaged. And when I met with every board member in the fall, that was one of my questions. Do you feel engaged? And every single board member said, yes, I feel engaged. So there's kind of a disconnect going on. And, and I think it's just further educating the, the board members. And I'm not sure how the best way to do that is because I personally think the board meetings are excellent and the information presented is all very thorough and complete and understandable. Um, so perhaps that can be added, um, figure out how to, how to bring the board more up to speed. And if, and if I can touch on that real quick, that was one of the guiding um, principles behind the executive officer report that I've been pu um, publishing after each board member or at board meeting, especially highlighting the board actions. Um, and then one of the things I know I have to improve upon is sharing what's rattling around in my head and sharing it in the right way. Um, a lot of times I end up doing it in disparate one-on-one -on -one meetings, committee meetings. I need to find a way that's similar to the executive officer report that's concise on one page to share some of those other strategic visions that are rattling around in my head. Okay, I reacted to all of the high, high um, pieces on this chart. And if you don't mind, I would like to say what, because they're just this small, I was able to, my reactions in the box. So it's really <laughs> small. Um, I think, well, just following up on what Julie said, Maybe as members of the board, we can contact our fellow members of the board, like, hello, we haven't seen you, thought you might want to catch up, and I can tell you what happened at the last meeting, encouraging our fellow members of the board to come to the meetings or to be more aware, because they have a constituency they're supposed to be reporting back to. And I think, you know, taking this job wasn't just, you know, you have a responsibility back. Okay, so that was that one. Um, so going to page 10, the top one, where it says um, establish an internship program um, for helping answer questions, participate in public facing events to help MWPA move forward. I think not necessary. We already are doing that. We have, um, we're in, there are all kinds of programs. We also have the Fire Foundry, we have everything that's going on with um, Fire Safe Marin. Uh, we're visible in the IJ. We have local staff at local events. We already respond to members' requests. So that's that one. Um, stop me if you want to. But okay, so on page 11 at the top, the first one says um, fight board complacency. Well, I think I just, you know, that was my suggestion of you know, us as board members getting the other board members in. Uh, we have to always be aware of the Brown Act. We can't call too many of our fellow board members without it being you know, a quorum. So, but that's, or, and that was another thing that was, I've heard before. Could we hold a retreat or a just a board exercise where we all get together at the beginning of the year to help set the priorities? So we're off campus or we're on campus, but off, you know, formal meeting. So that way we can sort of give you our impressions individually that will help you feel like you know where the board stands at the beginning. And then if we say it, we have to, we have to then stick with it and not, you know, try to stick with it. Okay, so then the next one down below is start strategic discussions about laying the groundwork for Measure C. For me, the major thing that's gonna pass Measure C is success. Having things visible to the public, they see what we're doing, we are, and it's just what Bruce said, you know, we have um, a vision of what we're supposed to be doing at the end, but my goodness, I sign checks for us, you know, for, for grant programs, for people who are putting the money out to clear their property, they get the money back, 
They tell their neighbors, their neighbors are asking me and my area, how do I get a grant? What do I do? The chipper days, all, all kinds of stuff, public involvement, um, ember stomp, all of these things. I mean, we are really um, letting people know where to look for success. And, and I think, you know, if we continue in that route, that success is going to be what makes the people say, oh, yeah, we got this done under this program. So I think it's worth continuing. Of course, there are new things that we haven't explored that Bruce already brought up that we when we do the, I'm not quite sure what a build out is, but when we get to that point, um, those are the things we point to in a campaign. And um, so I think we're campaigning right now for Measure C by just being successful. Okay, then the next one is uh, executive, I'm talking too much, but I think that the com the executive committee, um, it would be the same number of meetings, whether we have more executive committee and less board meetings. I think what we have now seems to be working, um, but I would welcome other people's ideas on that. Um, and then the next one was to discuss the development of pilot projects for a highly visible vegetation management. Um, I don't, I don't know about pilot projects. Aren't we actually doing vegetation management right now? Aren't those? I mean, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that means. To so somebody, on, I mean, who brought this up might be able to explain that to me. But well, I, the, the key word, if I can interrupt, the, that I saw in there was restoration. And um, oh, restoration, yes, and, thank and, you. and and not to dig too deep on this one particular item, but we have to be careful with restoration. Um, it, the restoration has to come in conjunction with wildfire prevention. And actually, we have a, um, a couple of great projects already down that route, so that's part of that two thirds of where we're already going. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate that. anytime pop in explanations are welcome. And then the last one, I think, is actively search for and identify new strategic partners across um, all aspects. We are doing that. You just announced how many networking situations you have, conferences you're going to, places that we're being asked to speak, and our work is being used as an example. I, I think we're really doing a great job. So um, that's kind of already in the picture. And, 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 if, and if I can offer just a quick observation, this, when I say that like two thirds of these items, or I feel like we're already doing, I, I'm not offering that as a, as a criticism. I'm, I'm offering that as of validation that we are in the right, going in the right direction. I, I would agree with that. So that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Catherine. I want to thank the, uh, the subcommittee for working on this. Thank you, Gene, for putting this together. It's really important, but I do appreciate that you want to prioritize this list and sort of what I'm looking for, and I think the, the committee could work with Mark and do this and Gene, it's kind of a critical timeline. Where does all this play into? We know we have a, a, a sunset in the current ordinance. So how does all this connect with that critical timeline? And then what is the what is the cost or the resources needed to do it? Because there may be things like the ATC and Ops Committee becoming not a Brown Act. It just is a, a, an hour or two of legal time to resolve that. Um, I think that's an right. excellent idea, um, but it may not be very, uh, you know, take many much resources to do that. So, so I, I appreciate the work that you've done. I hopefully you'll continue. I'll, I'll sort of think that's the next step to continue working with Mark to refine this. But I do like the idea of prioritizing it. And, you know, some of these things probably came up months ago now. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, a lot of lot changes quickly in this organization. So it'd be interesting to see if they pop up again next time. And then maybe they can be prioritized if they do. But many of them may be addressed already. So, all right. Cool. Anything else on this item before we go to the public? Yeah, Julie, go ahead. And, and I really like your recommendation, Gene, of having this on a consent calendar so that everyone knows that their comments were taken seriously and we're addressing them. Okay. I can I can probably do that for the May meeting. And if not, um, you know, shortly thereafter. The the main thing that I'm hearing then is um, in terms of direction is that the ad hoc committee stays in place, works with me, Mark, and Anne to further refine this. And as Rachel 
rightly pointed out, you know, our, our estimates on cost and effort are um, back of the envelope. And so it's just our initial take on it, which means this is a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And so, and some of these things may get set aside and, you know, or they're already incorporated and you're right. It's been at six months since, since these issues were raised and a lot can happen in six months. Sure. So that's the direction I'm hearing is that the subcommittee work continues and works with Mark and Ann. Yep. Yep. Terrific. All right. We're going to go to the public then on this item, Martina. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the current agenda item, the discussion and possible priority setting of organizational development suggestions, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining us by phone. And sir, there are no hands for comment. Okay, thank you. Bring it back to the committee for any further feedback or discussion. All right, seeing none, we're going to move on to item nine and board of directors agenda review. Mark? Should be pretty quick. Um, like I said, we will add a consent item, and that is the Fire Safe Marin contract. Um, the, the insurance policy will be going to the Finance Committee on Monday for their review and recommendations to the full board, and that is a minimum insurance requirements for the MWPA, um, not to go out and get an insurance policy. It's, it's awkward saying it that way, so we changed the title of that. And um, very excited to be bringing forth a um, professional services agreement with our recommended contractor for our um, GIS work. And that really is going to allow us to dig into an area that we haven't been able to dig into that's going to answer a lot of questions for us. So um, while it's on a consent, it is a very important and exciting item. And um, the rest of it, we've pretty much gone over the um, Anne will give the presentation for the work plan, and then I will give the presentation for our budget. And then, Bruce, thank you very much for the feedback um, when we described the vegetation management um, specialist positions for the um, for the board. And then that's it. That's all I have for the agenda. It's 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 a super important meeting, but fairly straightforward as well. Hi, Mark. Thanks. Um, one question. I'm, I'm looking back at our last month's executive committee meeting um, where we discussed um, uh, uh, agenda review of the previous one. And I, I'd asked questions about um, when, when we'll be getting a little bit uh, update on ingress egress work and the regional priority plan. And um, the response was that, that, that the, the RPP wasn't ready. It's getting closer. So we just keep an eye on that, number one. Um, but then secondly, um, but you had stated that the evacuation, ingress, egress risk assessment and the wildfire risk perception survey will be on the next meeting's agenda. So those have been omitted. Um, is that an omission or are we not ready? We covered those in the March meeting. Uh, they're all covered then. Yeah, we hit those items in March. Okay, so uh, the up, we, we... the evac ingress egress risk assessment had a full presentation in March, along with the wildfire risk perception survey had a full uh, presentation in March. Thanks for refreshing my memory. <laughs> Sorry, I was wondering as you um, as part of your um, giving too much feedback. All right, try again. Um, as part of your, probably your exec report update, maybe if there's items that come from the conferences that you're attending, I know we're leading the way on a number of items, but if there are things that you're seeing out there that are trending uh, statewide to bring those back and share those, I'd actually be curious if there's anything new and shiny, not necessarily new and shiny, that's probably not the right way, but <laughs> <laughs> something we need might need to take into consideration as we go forward that you're seeing as a good uh, practice. You bet. Thank you. Yeah, again, I apologize for I, I had a rough uh, had a rough month. So, yeah. um, but I would ask that you would you please uh, connect with with one Tam Danny and the status of the RPP, and um, you know, I just ask that maybe perhaps you could give us an update in your executive officer's report on the status of that in the coming meeting. You bet. Um, I I don't know the exact timeline, Danny wasn't clear as to when it would be released. And I've not seen a press release 
but I know that you know this is going to be a, a landmark uh, document that that actually lays out a a footprint for effective ecological restoration here in Marin. It's it's a milestone product. So if if you could just give get, chase that down for us, I know you need more to do, but you know how important it is, and and you're going to be talking to you know the 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 welfare task force and all and. And the relationship of of that, I, I suspect that Danny and team are not going to be a part of that that um, meeting down in in Santa Cruz. Oh, they're down there. Oh, they will. They're tabling with us. Oh, great, perfect. Okay. Anyway, if you could just keep us up to date on that, Mark, I'd appreciate it. And then just a quick follow up: the as far as the challenge has been, the people who would be the recipient of that regional priority plan can't decide who's going to be the recipient of that regional priority plan and um the fun, how the funding will be distributed and however um assembly member um Connolly is working on assembly bill 388 that could help define that yeah yeah keep it posted julie anything on this item okay we're going to go to the public on the future agenda for mwpa if there are any members of the public wishing to comment on the Board of Directors draft agenda, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining us by phone. And so there are no hands for comment. Thank you. We're bringing it back to the committee for any further discussion. Feedback to staff. Okay, thank you. Item 10 is committee requests, our committee member requests regarding future agendas of the executive committee. And, and if I may offer one, um, we, we're laying out our um, set of agendas for the rest of the year, and we are targeting July as a month that potentially canceling both the exec committee and the board meeting. Very good. Thank you for that update, Mark. Anything else on requests by committee members? Seeing none. Uh, then I think we're going to do the closed session item. Uh, as indicated on agenda, the executive committee will hold a closed session pursuant to government code section 54957.6 for a conference with MWPA negotiator Jean Bondender related to her negotiations with the executive officer. And at this time, I'm going to accept public comment on the closed session item only. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the closed item session only, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining us by phone. And so there are no hands for closed session comment. All right, <clears throat> we're going to adjourn to closed session. And we'll be back in open session to announce that uh, if there was any action taken. So thank you. Thank you very much for returning to open session and there's no reportable action that was taken in closed session. And I wanna adjourn now to our meeting uh, on May 18th, uh, our regular board meeting, May 18th. So see you all there. Thank you. Thank you.